Welcome to Fusion Friday. Today, we're gonna build this totally bitchin' bar graph. Now, before we dive in, I wanna assure you that most of the effort is in making it pretty. The actual work, as it were, to make a functional graph is fairly easy. I mean, trust me. Down in the description area, you'll find a handy link to download some Fusion files you can use. Included in the zip is a readme file that'll give you some pretty helpful info. If you drag one of the provided dot setting files into Fusion, the node graph will appear ready to use. I've included both bar graph basic and bar graph complete. <laughs> so rad. All right, let's get busy. And oh yeah, I've got the uh, chapter marker thingies enabled too. Okay, here we are in Fusion. Let's go ahead and begin building our basic bar graph. First, I wanna change my workspace layout. So I'm gonna go to workspace, layout presets, Fusion presets, and mid flow. And the reason I wanna do this is since we're building a bar graph, it's tall and skinny, so I can stick it over here for the visual, and I've got plenty of workspace for my nodes. All right, two-tone bar graph, let's go. Background, background. This background is gonna be our fill color. So I'm gonna say bar fill. This one will be our background color. Bar BG color gonna merge these together and I'm gonna throw the merge into this viewer. Nice and ugly right now, but that's okay. We'll, we'll fix it up later. Name this merge. Now, one thing you'll notice is I'm gonna name every node every step of the way, just helps keep things nice and tidy. All right, let's set some colors. So the bar fill color, again, you can pick whatever color you want. I've got one that I've used from the demo. The background color is just gonna be sort of a transparent shading color. So the alpha, we're gonna set to 0.2. All right, let's grab a rectangle, bring that down. This will be the shape of our bar graph. So I'm gonna put it in both of these and I'm gonna name it bar mask. And all I wanna change on this is the width to 0.1, right? Skinny, but fat. There we go. And now I can zoom in on this view, and this is the only thing we really are gonna focus on, so that's all we need to see. Next, we need to be able to control this fill color, basically mask it out from zero to 100%. And we're gonna use an instance of the bar mask to accomplish that. So copy this, Command C or Control C, and then paste an instance. So I'll click off into nowhere, Command, Shift V, paste, drag that into bar merge. And on this instance, I'm gonna rename it to bar fill mask. So this will control the masking of this fill color in the merge. And I'm gonna de-instance the center property. So right click, de-instance. And now when I drag that down, it masks out the fill color and essentially gives me the bar graph. So we can see our mostly uh, opaque or transparent background on top of the background and then I have this fill color that I can control. So let's put in some controls for that. Grab a merge, bring that down. Let's grab a background. I'm gonna name this background alpha. Wire that to the merge node as a background. Did I get that right? These, these little things are too small for me to tell which is which. Yeah, got it right. All right, on this Alpha, I'm gonna actually pull the alpha all the way down. This is really the canvas that we're gonna work on. And this merge, I'm gonna rename to control node. Wire everybody up, boom, boom. Take media one out. I'm gonna hit two on my keyboard that puts it over in the display and we're good to go. All right, so for this merge node, I'm gonna add a property to it. So we've got you know all these properties up here. We're gonna add a new control, new property. Right click, edit controls. We're gonna call this value. And this will be our value from one to 100, representing zero to 100%. It's gonna be a number, it can go on a user page. Default value is zero, it's an integer. Range zero to 100. The allowed range, zero to 100. It's gonna be a slider control. The center is at 50. And we're just gonna do this in, you know, in 1% increments as it were. Say, okay. And we can see it's created a new slider up here for us on the user page called value. And so I wanna associate this value with a range for this mask. So in the center property, 
on the bar fill mask. I'm gonna right click and expression. And I assure you, this is not a scary expression. We're just gonna change the Y parameter of this point. So the point is point X, Y, X stays at 0.5. For the Y position, we want it to be based on that value property from control node. So here's the expression. And this particular expression works for this particular example because of the fact that I left the height and the location of the bar mask and rectangle where it's at. But now when I go to control node from zero to 100, I can control our bar graph. I can animate this value. You can set it if I wanted it to be at 78%. Boom, our bar graph is at 78%. All right, that's our basic bar graph from here. We're just gonna start decorating it. Now we're gonna add text to show the current percentage. It's gonna make a little bit of room, so I'm gonna scoot the bar over here, maybe scoot this stuff out of the way a little bit. Don't really need to see media out. Uh, move those over. All right, let's grab a text node. And I'm gonna grab two colors again, because I want uh, two-tone text. And yes, text does have a color property, but we're actually gonna use text as a mask into the two different colors, use the fill mask to then control how those colors appear. So let's start renaming. Text, I'm just gonna call text. I'm gonna say text. So the text fill color and then the text background. wire everything up, wired up, wired up, merge these together, rename this text merge, and then put this on our fill line here, and bar text merge. All right, this fill mask, I wanna use it to control these, which color shows up. So let's go ahead and set some colors for the text. So our fill color, I'm gonna come in here and again, you can choose any color you want. And for our background text color. All right, let's go ahead and just stick a value in here so we can see something. We'll do 50. And I'm gonna take this fill mask I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna pipe it into our merge. Let's see, text fill color, swap these, so command T, there we go. And change our control node value, let's put that at 50. And you can see with that mask in effect, we now have the ability to cut this text color in half. So as I move the control node value, boom, there we go. Easy as that, but obviously we want this text to represent the current percentage. So we're gonna clear out the text property itself, right click, expression, and this one's extremely easy as well. We want control node dot value, hit enter. And so it's at 71. In fact, if I go to the control node, you can see I can go up to 100, I can go down to zero, everything in between. If I want the percent sign, come back to text in the expression. I'm gonna add dot, dot, quote, percent, quote. And now I have a percentage. So let's bring our control node up to 100%. Let's go work on our font so it fits. So take the text. Again, I'm gonna pick uh, Fresno. I'm gonna bring that size down just so it fits, just like that. And now we have text showing the percentage of our bar graph, just that simple. Now that we've got our text in place, time to start styling it. And so here we're gonna add a drop shadow and a little bit of edge and glow around the text itself. Let's start with the drop shadow. So I'm gonna select text merge, shift space, drop shadow. Go ahead and select drop shadow, hit okay. Pull that down here. I'm just gonna rename this drop shadow. Gonna reuse this later on, I'll show you where, but for now, take this drop shadow. Let's go ahead and set the properties so we can see it. I'm gonna take the strength all the way up. I'm gonna bring the blur all the way down so I can see it. Then we'll get the distance just right. Again, this is all to taste. Might add me a little bit of blur back in. 
maybe something like that. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to I want to add an edge around all of the text and make it glow. There is a node called Edge Detect, but this is not the, what we want. Instead, we want this fusion effect. So I'm going to come into Effects. I'm going to go down to uh, Tool or uh, Templates, Fusion, Tools, and this Edge Control node, this is the node I want. So I'm going to drag this up here, get rid of the effects so I have some more real estate. I'm going to take this Edge Control node, take the text, drag it into here, and for right now, I'm just gonna hit two on the keyboard so it's in my viewer, and I can see what it looks like. And now, just wanna mess with these controls a little bit till I get a nice, clean, clean selection. Again, there's no right or wrong answer to that. Just get it where you want it to be. Perfect, good enough. Now with that edge control selected, shift space, and we'll add some glow. Again, I'm gonna hit two on my keyboard so I can see it off in the viewer. Maybe bring that glow size down a little bit. And now I wanna take this glow and I wanna pipe it into the merge just above the drop shadow. I'm gonna put this over here and rename this to glow merge, text glow merge. Come back to my media out, hit two so we can see everything. Zoom back out. I also want and this is up to you. If you want the glow to always be there, it can be there. I'm going to change it so that the edge is only visible in the fill portion. And so again, I can reuse this mask. And this really starts to illustrate the power of node-based compositing within Resolve and Fusion especially is, is the ability to take a node and pipe it into multiple other nodes to, to just reduce the amount of work you actually have to do. So I can take this same mask pipe it into here, and now this edge only shows up as the fill is there. Look at that. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. Awesome. All right, let's continue on with our text now nice and styling. It's time to move on to style the bar graph itself. And again, you can go to your heart's content with this, however you want to do it. I'm just gonna do it based on the uh, example I showed in the beginning. So let's start by creating an outline around the bar graph itself. And again, this bar mask is gonna come in very handy for this. But first, let's grab a background color, bring this down. We're gonna call this uh, bar fill color or bar uh, outline color here. Gonna go ahead and merge this up into our main merge. Just rename this bar outline merge. And we want to use this bar mask because that's the shape of, of it, but we're gonna need to change the property. So again, I can create an instance. So select it, command C, paste an instance of it off into outer space here. Rename this to bar outline mask, pipe this into our, our graph. And I wanna take this outline and I wanna de-instance the border width and I'm gonna de-instance the fact that it's solid. So I'm gonna uncheck solid, and then I'm gonna up this border width. Perfect, all right, now we need a border color. So on my border color, pick the color, come in here, and I've got a color. Boop. There's my border color, pull that down. Let's uh, maybe move that over a bit, give us a little more working room here. So now I've got a border color, I want this same sort of border color, but I want it on the fill. So I want a border right along the top here. So the same thing, border color, copy the color. Click into nowhere, paste an instance, merge up here. This will be bar fill outline merge. This will be bar fill color. And so this fill mask is the mask that I want to use and I can pipe it into here, and if I do that, I get this. So again, I need a fill mask, but I need it slightly different. So I'm gonna take that off, I'm gonna copy it, paste an instance of it, and again, I'm gonna de-instance the solid. I'm gonna de-instance the border width. Now when I plug it in, I can take the solid and uncheck it, and I can bring up the border width, 
And so for this one, we'll do 0 0.002, something like that. However, you can see that I've got this border runs down here because it's 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 tied to where the mask is. So in this control node, you can see it'll go like that. We wanna we wanna trim that away, which is easy enough to do. Take this bar mask, pipe it into this fill mask here, change the paint mode to minimum. Boop. And now I have accomplished an interior alignment of that. Look at that. We've got oh, that looks so good. Good, so good. Now that we've got the interior, I wanna create this little sort of shadow edge on this right side. So again, we're gonna take down a color here of the background. We'll leave it like this. We'll just bring it down so it's kind of opaque maybe. We'll say, uh, I'll do uh, we'll do bar edge uh, shading. That'll be a good name for it. We'll merge it into our line here. And I want it to be basically the same height as the bar mask, but I'm gonna change a few extra properties. So again, I wanna take the bar mask, I wanna copy it, paste an instance of it, pipe it into here. All right, so not bad. Uh, bar instance, we're going to de-instance the width, we're gonna de-instance the position, and de-instance the soft edge property. So now the width, I'm gonna bring that down quite a bit, something like that. We're gonna scoot it off to the side here. Looks pretty good. Maybe you wanna de-instance the height a little bit. All right, so I can scoot it up maybe like that. Let's pull this up. That's looking good. And again, this is all to taste. Might widen this up, scoot it over, something like that. Maybe go to the shading color. Maybe this is a little darker. A little, maybe something like that. All right, come back to this mask, soft edge. Go ahead and give it a bit of a little soft edge on that side. Yeah, something like that, not too bad. All right, but it's running all the way up the top. So again, I want this bar mask to be constrained by this this fill mask here right and so i can i can again i can pipe this in and boom there we go the last thing i want to do is just add a drop shadow to this so i'm just going to take our drop shadow node select it copy it click off into nowhere command shift v paste an instance of it and just drag it into this line and now my bar graph itself has a drop shadow on it I might move the distance out a little bit. So maybe you get something like that. Maybe de-instance this. Go back to this drop shadow, bring that drop distance back, something like that. There we go. And maybe this one knock down the strength. Something like that. There we go. And that's it. That is our bar graph fully stylized. We can easily control the value. Zero to 100 looks fantastic. With it all styled up now, the last thing to do is just create a simple macro. So, you know, we might be creating a video where you need three or four of these to show up for different percentages. I'm just going to show you a quick way to make a fast macro and then how we can use this. So I'm going to zoom out here and so I can select everybody. I'm gonna take everything, and highlight all my nodes except for the media out, right click, macro. You can see I already have a bar graph macro, but I'm just gonna hit create macro. This will bring up the little macro tool. I'll call it bar graph. And now I need to select the outputs. And you can see control node is already sort of highlighted here because that's the output, which is the output of our composition. We definitely want that. And then under here, we're gonna want the value. Now you can choose, of course, to export all the properties for colors and all of that stuff, more complicated. I'm just gonna do these two properties just to show you how we can do it real quick. Click the three dots. I'm gonna hit save. This brings up the default save location. If you're on a Mac, it's here. If you're on a PC, it's somewhere else. I have bar graph, that's fine. I'm gonna overwrite it. I'm gonna save, replace, and I can close this dialog. Now I'm just gonna, 
disconnect this for a second. And I'm gonna switch my workplace view back to normal, as it were, uh, default. And then I can use the mini viewer and I can go hunt down the media out. And the reason is we wanna show a couple of different bar graphs here. So right click, add tool, we're gonna to go to macros, bar graph, and I'm just gonna create three of these. So I can copy, I can paste, I can paste again take a background so we can see our background we'll just pick a color for it maybe something like maybe something like that okay take the background into media out and now i want to take these three bar graphs and i need to be able to size them and move them so i'm going to take down three transforms put all these into transforms and then i want to put all these into a multi-merge Let's do this, take our background into the multi-merge, multi-merge into our media out, and then all three of our bar graphs can run into the multi-merge. Let's take them all, uh, let's fit our graph here so we can see it. All right, we'll take the first one, we'll take the center position, maybe to 0.4, maybe a little more than that, 0.3. There we go. We'll take our last one over here. So transform one underscore two, um, point 0.7, move that over. And then for each bar graph, of course, we can give them a different value. So maybe this one's at uh, 31%. This one can be maybe up here at 67. The last one maybe is down here at 34%. Take our background, maybe we Bring that color a little darker, something like that. There we go. And that's it. Now you have bar graph control that you can create, you can animate. So I could go to, let's say, let's go to frame, uh, let's say at two seconds we want these. So let's do this real quick. I'm gonna go to frame 48 and all the bar graphs, I'm going to create a animation key on the value property. We'll then go to zero frame zero and bring all these values down for their keyframe value to zero to zero. There we go. Now, if I play, they all start animating up. Of course, these are going percent by percent. If you want smoother, you can create some uh, easing curves on the animations. You can add some motion blur. That's it. That's all it takes to make a bar graph. From there, it's just a matter of stylizing it and tweaking it to your preferences. And that's a wrap. I do hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below what other type of fusion gizmos you're interested in learning how to make. If there's a particular video tutorial, say in After Effects, and you want to see the fusion version of it, let me know that too. All right, until next time, do whatever it is you do, be a good human, and I'll see you in the future.